What's up guys, One Take Pickle Fear here today, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to manipulate samples slash loops so your beats will not sound the same as everybody else's, you know, making the same beat with the same loop like it has been all 2020 and 2021. So, I got loops from my producers John Luther and Pario right here in front of me, you know, them boys always snap every time they send me something, so I'm going to, uh, you know, drop them in the playlist, tweak them, and show you guys what I do. Alright, so in front of me right now, I have this Euphoria loop made by uh, John Luther. And I put it at 134 BPM. And I'm going to put it on stretch mode so I can change the tempo willy-nilly. Whatever I want to. So, I'm going to put it on 134 to start off. And just listen to it, feel the vibe. So what I like to always do when I start out is I like to duplicate this. So I'm just going to left click it, put another one right there. Then I'm going to solo this one, right click it, make unique, and I'm going to send this one to a separate mixer. Now what this does is it gives me full flexibility to do whatever I want to this layer without affecting the one previously. And to uh, differentiate them, I'm going to change the color. I like to do that a lot. Let's pick a nice blue and I'm going to label this one right here as my right layer then I'm also going to take that one duplicate it again make unique this is going to be you guessed it my left layer I'll color this one orange so we don't get them mixed up now I'm going to uh, pan this one about 60 to the right and this one's 60 to the left. And already we're hearing some great differences. I'm going to cut this right here. Just press C on my keyboard for the cut tool. Hold shift down. Left click. Do that. And just to show you what they got. Uh, I can't talk. I'm sorry. I, I didn't learn English ever. Uh, I'm just going to put some background claps in so we can just get the feeling for it. What it would sound like with a beat. This helps. A lot of people don't do this when making melodies. Um, I think it helps me out. I'm actually going to feel some more panning. Maybe let's try 70 left, 70 right. And then I want the right layer to be pitched an octave up. So I'm going to go to this pitch range. Stretch, uh, do that. I don't really like how whiny it sounds though because it's like so high up. I don't want it to like get in the way of um, an artist getting on it. But it's it's fire for just the beat, so I'm just gonna filter it. Yeah, so much better. I'm going to open up some fast distortion right here. And I'm going to um, bring it all the way down over here. And uh, my apologies, I have my chat box overlay on the screen. I'm just going to automate that by right clicking it and pressing the letter A on my keyboard. And I'm going to automate this to um, sort of like have that sweeping feeling. But I, want the, I don't want the peak of it to sound too distorted, so I'm just going to go to mix. Then on this one on the left, I'm going to pitch it an octave down. I don't like how muddy it is though, so I'm just going to take out some lows. Raise it. I want it to sound really glittery though. Um, Put some Valhalla on it maybe. I don't have Shimmer right now. I don't think it's installed, but... Put a phaser on it. Mess with some presets. So, um, a little trick that the man who made this loop actually showed me is, um, if your sample actually ever starts after the one, you can grab this little tool up here, the slip tool, 
and then highlight that, hold down Alt on your keyboard, and then just left click that and drag it over. Instead of having to cut up your sample and do all that extra stuff. And we still have the main layer. But this one is actually half time right now, so what I'm going to do is go to the stretch, make sure that's on there, and then do that, unclick it. I'm going to put this one up an octave too. But then I'm going to half time it. I'm actually feeling some delay on it, but I want some quick delay. Some like, like some really fast delay. Yeah. I'm going to ping pong it. And I'm going to make that louder just so I can hear it. Just for emphasizing it um, when messing around with it right now. You just put a bass right there. Layer with the melody. It wouldn't hurt. So. And down is the note we want to hit. It doesn't sound right though, so. It's because it's not uh, exactly on the same tuning, so. Just gonna use this little pitch knob up here. That's the second note. So if you did want to change the chord progression of a melody, it's very easy. All you really have to do is make sure there's uh, not too many conflicting notes. And what I mean by that is make sure the chords are not, you know, playing where you're wanting to put your new chords. So. This one note starts here, but it doesn't play again over here. So I can sort of do a dip right here. Dun, 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 dun. If I wanted to. Or if you wanted to do a four bar uh, progression, you could do something like this. But you hear it's, it's not, um, it doesn't sound right because the bass notes of what we have up here conflict with that. So um, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to uh, go to these layers, add an EQ, and cut out all the lows, and you know pitch them up. That's a whole other step. So for this tutorial, the sake of this video, we're just going to keep it simple and use the same chords that um, John Luther gave me. But if you guys want a tutorial on how to change the chords of a sample, let me know in the comments so I can do that for you too. One of the most overlooked things about uh, manipulating melodies is reversing them. So I'm just going to right-click this one, make unique reverse it let's drag it out so we can see where we need to you know chop it up I'm gonna cut it at the very beginning this is where it should end right here so I'm gonna line that up with a grid line a transient whatever all the technical terms then I'm just um gonna cut this but since we reversed it the order of the chords is gonna be different so what we want to do is I'm going to cut up these um, chords right here just by the bar because that's that's how frequently they change see this note right here is over here and this note is over here so we just need to flip them so the way I like to do it is I just flip the whole thing backwards like this until FL Studio comes up with a better way to you know reverse everything instead of having to reverse chops um, you know you're stuck doing some sort of manual labor to do it so image line if you see this I really I really just want you guys to put this in your next update just you guys don't ever listen to me on like stuff I want to change in FL Studio and I think I have a voice in the FL Studio community that you guys don't appreciate so if you guys want to do something in the littlest amount smallest amount just change this please just let me reverse it like that with just one button the R new track What I did right there is I just, you know, scrolled down on these little circles, dragged them up really high, and isolated some uh, frequencies that I thought needed to be taken out. And there you go. That's pretty much how I would manipulate a sample in making a beat without having it, you know, just be the standard um, drag and drop, add drums. If you want to, you know, what you can do here is export this like this. So right click all that, make sure you highlight it. You don't have to, but 
Get a little arm disc down there. Export that. Now we want, we can even work with it more. Like if we want to speed it all the way back up to 163, we can. And then just pitch it up. I forgot we had the clap in there, but you can make a beat with this, and yeah, it's awesome. Hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, um, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see next. And with that being said, let's skedaddle.